Today's the day that I start renovating my camper's kitchen and I saved it as the last big project because I figured it would be the funnest project so I decided to tape myself doing the entire thing so bear with me I have never done this before uh, total beginner but here we go here's what the campers kitchen looked like when I bought it uh, it actually looks better in these clips than it does currently because it's so nice and clean because the previous owners cleaned it up because they were selling it and here's what the camper kitchen looks like now I did start to take things apart a little bit. I took off the fronts of the cabinets and painted those while I was working on painting the fronts of the other cabinets in the camper um, so that they would all match and be done the same way. And I also started working on this little end piece right here, which used to be a weird, kind of hideous 90s piece of carpet. Step number one, clean this place up. clean which I don't even know why I did that first because I'm about to sand and get everything dirty again but for some reason it feels good to just clean it first luckily there were no surprises there and now it's time to start putting on the liquid sandpaper um, I went back and forth between manually sanding and using liquid sandpaper on other parts of the camper that I've done already and they all turned out pretty much the same and the liquid sandpaper is way easier so I'm going to use that next. Okay, so sadly it is already evening and I've barely got anything done. I just got some sanding done, the shop vacuuming, unscrewing a few things, and that's it. I'm going to start the evening work by unscrewing a few more things and taping some things off to protect them. One of the best tips that I heard was to make sure and keep all of your hardware from each part of your renovation separate and labeled. Do it. I just removed this uh, who knows what piece of plastic from up here and I had to literally use a crowbar to do it. And I think it was just one of those like command strips holding it up so those things are no joke. Nobody's ever going to notice if I don't paint this teeny tiny little bit of the underside of the cabinets here, but you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and do it because it won't take that long and I might as well do it right. Okay, I think I got everything taped now, although some of the pieces of tape are not sticking. I've covered the stove, I've covered the vent hood, I've covered the light switch cover. I've taken, uh, I've unscrewed pretty much everything I can, including the cover on the heater, which I think now that I look at it, maybe I can spray paint that with some high heat black spray paint to make it look a little nicer because it's brown. Um, but I also <laughs> put a bag around this beautiful Bluetooth that's brand new that the previous owners put in here. I do not want to mess that up nor do I want to mess up my pretty white sink, although I do not care about the faucet. Piping has to be scuffed up a little bit with sandpaper to improve the adhesion of the paint. Oh, 
Okay, the last thing I'm going to do tonight is apply that liquid sandpaper stuff. It is kind of stinky and I have to wear gloves, so I like to do that kind of thing right before I leave the camper for the night so that it can off gas without me being physically in here. painting. Um, the liquid sandpaper is dry, I guess. It does look like it still has a sheen, but I'm just going to keep going. I think it's fine. The test cabinets I did were fine. And this morning I talked to my dad and we talked about how to remove the countertop and we found all the screws, hopefully, so I'm going to try and remove the countertop. I'm also removing all the screws on the underside of the sink. Okay, now I'm going to use a utility knife to scrape off all the caulk around the edge of the sink. Let's remove the sink. This is going to be so satisfying. Yes! That came out so easy. Woohoo! Now that the sink is out of there, hopefully it'll be a lot easier to undo all these little screws under the counter that's holding it in place. And as long as I'm messing around over here, I decided to unscrew these, which was really easy. You just uh, unscrew it. <laughs> and then unscrew these on the uh, underside of the sink, which is also really obvious how to do it. The countertop is all wiggly, ready to come off. I don't know if you can see that. See? But the stove seems to be in the way somehow. So I need to figure out how to remove it. I could look it up on YouTube, but why not just try and mess with it? Um, so I started wiggling things to see what happens. And apparently this top part just comes right off. Super easy. It wasn't attached in any way. I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be, but mine wasn't. And so when you take that off, you can see the screws. whoop de doo Okay, I unscrewed everything, and then I wiggled it, and guess what? It just slides out. I don't know, it might be too heavy. I'm going to try it and see if I need help. So the reason I couldn't just pull it out, I kept getting stuck, is duh, of course, it's attached to the propane supply line, and I could pretty easily unscrew that, but I also want to check on whether it is safe to do so. Alright, so now while I wait for my dad to get here so I can ask him about the supply lines for the propane, whether I can unscrew those, whether that's safe, I'm going to just try and get the very first coat of primer on, finally, onto the cabinet. So here's how it looks after the first coat of primer. It's, you know, blotchy, but that's just how it looks after the first coat of primer. One choice that I've been making that seems unusual is that I'm painting the inside of the cabinets. When I open up my cabinet, I don't want to be grossed out. I would rather have it look nice and clean, especially in this one right above the sink that's kind of an important cabinet, and then I'm doing black inside that one. I don't know why. We'll see how it looks. Um, and in case you're curious, the reason why I have not painted um, that wooden wall back there or the wall here, which is kind of like a gray wallpaper, I don't 
I don't know what you call this. That's what the wallpaper looks like. The reason I haven't painted that is not because I like it, but because I plan to put up this gorgeous peel and stick tile. And on the wall, I plan to put up this wallpaper. So that will look super cute, hopefully. Okay, so it's later in the same day, and now I'm going to continue working. My goal is to do a coat of primer and to remove the um, the stove because I talked to my dad today and he told me that as long as the propane gas is turned off, it should be okay to just unscrew it. Fun fact, this is actually the first time I've had to use a wrench in this entire project. dismantled more than I needed to, but I think I'm on the right track. I unscrewed this piece, which, you know, doesn't really need to come out because it does have to stay up to support the next countertop, but I couldn't get this out without unscrewing this, so it is what it is. I will re-screw this piece in as soon as I can get this piece off. All right. I reattached those wood pieces that I had detached while taking out the stove. So I'm going to spackle in that seam there, and I also took a picture of these two signs so that I can recreate them in a cuter version after I, um, tile this area. Covered some things that I don't want to drip paint on to and I think we're ready for primer coat number two. It's the next day in the afternoon and I'm going to do another coat of paint. Okay so I didn't film it earlier but Today, during the afternoon, I painted another coat of the semi-gloss paint onto the cabinets. And I'll show you that. Here's the paint. Oh wait, you can't see it because it's a filthy mess now. But it is called Concord Pro Pure Zero VOC Interior Semi-Gloss. And I used satin on the walls and semi-gloss on the cabinets. Anyway, I did another coat on that. So that makes five coats total. So we have two coats of primer and three coats of the semi-gloss and I think I'm happy with it. I'll probably do a little bit of touching up on the trim um, because the parts that you can't get with a roller don't get quite as good of coverage. So I'll probably do like a <laughs> six coats total on some of the parts but pretty happy with five coats. The coverage and the detail so you can kind of see just a little bit of dark showing through there but I don't know. I barely can see that. This is a spot that had one of those uh, carpet panel pieces on it. Um, so I put a chalkboard in there and I also made all this trim to make it look pretty. I could reattach the cabinet fronts or I could put up the wallpaper. And guess what's the most fun? The wallpaper. That's what I'm going to do. But first I'm going to remove all of the blue tape. Okay, blue tape is gone. Okay, so far when I've done wallpaper in other parts of the camper, I found it's a lot easier to uh, just put it up and then cut it as you're putting it up and not worry about lining it up with straight edges or anything like that. So. Fingers crossed, I'm going to try that again. Hopefully it works again. I take a piece of the wallpaper and I cut it kind of squiggly and then I hold it up to where I'm going to put it. And I check and see for any spots that look really bad. Like right away at the very bottom, there's a spot where one of the 
blotches is cut off. So I'll just cut that out and then I'm going to work my way up the edge and there are certain places where it'll blend in and certain places where it doesn't and I'll just make a bunch of tiny cuts. So these are the tiles that I have for the kitchen. They're pretty cool. They're nice and shiny um, and they're extremely lightweight. So I'm excited to start playing with these. So I followed the directions which said to attach these little adhesive strip stickers. I don't know if you can see that. They're like a foam with a sticky on either side and I just feel like this is not going to work. I'm going to have to go buy some kind of adhesive to use to attach them but we'll try it and see what happens. I made a little pattern using a piece of paper and cut this about 50 million times and finally got it to fit and um, I think it looks okay. Um, if you look closely, let's see if I can get this to focus. If you look closely, you can see that it does move a little bit. Um, and it makes this wonderful plasticky sound, but hopefully after I put some caulk on the edges, that will be okay. Um, it, it stuck way better than I thought it would, considering we're talking about like sticky strips of foam. Um, so I'm going to keep going this way and we'll see how it goes. All right, here's the progress so far in the morning light. I feel like I can s just start to picture what it's gonna look like when it's all done and it's making me very excited. I tested a new method for attaching the tiles involving using caulk and I like it so much better. It really sticks pretty well and yeah it's just a lot easier to do. It's a lot faster and it's just regular caulk so it's not very heavy or difficult to use or anything so I'm probably going to peel off some of these and then recut and attach a bunch more. tiling has been so tedious. So instead of working on that, I'm going to work on this shelf for a little while. I painted the inside black and then I cut these two pieces of wood and stained them. Well, here's one of them. And the other one is sitting right here under the trash and I realized that this one is actually a little bit too big so I'm going to trim that with the remainder of nap time. All right now we'll see if it fits. Hopefully I can do this with my left hand because I am right-handed. Someone's got to hold the camera. That is still way too tight. How is that possible? There. That'll fit. I screwed in that piece. I screwed in that piece. And then I put in this piece of trim in the front. See that? Yeah. Just a piece of trim in the front. Yeah, it's looking pretty decent. It's a shot of where we're at right now. How things are looking. Ah. Okay, now I'm going to cut the giant piece of wood that I bought for the kitchen countertop.
I don't know how well you can see this, but now I'm going through and taking this kind of sharp edge on the tabletop and making it a little bit more rounded, just using sandpaper, just in case anybody bumps themselves on it. day now and I brought the countertop inside to ins okay so it's the next night now and I have filled in some of the cracks with some putty and scraped it smooth and I uh... okay so it's the next night now it's the next night now and it's the next day now and I brought the counter inside the camper I filled up some of the holes with some putty and sanded it smooth and now I'm ready to start doing the coating. First I'm going over it with a tack cloth to remove any of the dust left over from sanding. I should also test out the sink to make sure that it fits. Ta-da! Now I'm going to apply, apply the polycrylic. For that to dry, I'm going to reattach some of the cabinet doors that I haven't reattached yet. This is my trick for screwing these things on. You attach this piece, just snap it in, then shut the cabinet door. It makes a little hole so you can see where to screw it in. Handy, huh? Beautiful day to work on the camper. Well, friendly strangers, I put four coats of waterproofing polycrylic on both the tabletop and the counters, and I think I'm done. I think it's pretty good. It's nice and smooth and really pretty. So now I'm going to screw it all in. All right, it's all screwed in, so now it's time to clean things up and put in the stove and sink. Just ran into a little hiccup sliding the stove back in can tell it won't slide quite all the way in and that is because there's a little spot right here in the corner where there's a lip um, right here that I didn't see and the counter is stopping it from sliding all the way back so I think that means I need to cut a little piece out of the corner of the counter which is gonna make me so nervous but it's got to be done. And it's now looking a little bit more kitchen-y. And I cut and spray painted a piece of trim to cover where the subway tile is not perfectly even. Alright, so here's where we're at right now. Things are starting to come together pretty well. And I'm going to install the faucet now. I also started working on tearing up the old floor, which revealed some pretty decent looking um, subfloor and not so decent looking old 90s parquet style vinyl. So one thing I learned when I got my brand new faucet in the mail is that the supply lines that come with a regular faucet do not actually hook up to a 
uh, normal, you know, water supply that's under your sink in an RV. So I had to get this adapter piece, or my dad got, uh, found this for me at the hardware store. So this uh, screws in here. Uh, you take this off first, I believe, and then this part screws into the water piping under the sink in the RV. The next step is to drill a hole in my beautiful countertop, which makes me so scared and nervous, but I got my dad's advice yet again, and I'm going to use this guy right here. This just attaches, I actually don't know what this is called. Um, comment with what it, this is called if you know. So the kitchen is finally done and I'm so excited to show it to you. watching my camper kitchen renovation video. So glad that is all finished. Um, now I'm going to start working on a video that reveals the entire camper because I'm pretty much all done with it. So keep an eye out for that. If you want to get a notification for when that um, is posted, then just uh, subscribe that right there. There should be a button. And thank you so much for watching. And if you have any comments about things that you would have done differently or that you think I should add or change, let me know because this is kind of a work in progress. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Bye.